Ukraine says Saudi Arabia is preparing to host an international summit to discuss a peace initiative for the war with Russia. Kyiv is expected to participate in the talks along with Western powers and key developing nations like India and Brazil. Russia, though, will not be involved. Ukraine hasn't specified when the meetings will be held, but says they'll focus on a 10-point peace plan, which was developed by its president, Volodymyr Zelensky. A Russian official says Ukraine has launched a drone attack on the uh, Bryansk region, hitting a building of the district's uh, Department of Internal Affairs. It's the latest strike in Russia that Moscow has blamed on Kyiv. On Sunday, the Kremlin also accused Ukraine of launching a drone attack on Moscow. Or, uh, Russia says it intercepted three unmanned vehicles. But as you can see in this video, at least one of them crashed into the business centre. Just moments ago, Ukraine accused Russia of launching attacks of its own, saying two missiles were fired towards a central Ukrainian city. And CNN's Claire Sebastian has been monitoring all of this. First of all, the attacks from what appears to be Ukraine on Russia. Mm. They haven't denied it, have they? They haven't said anything yet, but no, they haven't denied it. Uh, and this comes after comments by President Zelensky on Sunday, essentially saying, you know, gradually, he says, the war is returning to the territory of Russia. This is an inevitable, natural and fair process, he says. And really, this is the third time in four days that we've seen Russia accuse Ukraine uh, of attacking its soil. This one, uh, a drone, according to the regional governor in the Bryansk region, I think we can pull up the map of where that is. It's just across the northern border uh, of Ukraine, really on the border there. He says that a, a building was hit, no casualties. It happened overnight. Uh, they're cleaning up the damage. They didn't claim as of yet that they'd shot down that drone, whereas with the attacks on Moscow uh, on Sunday, and then there was a missile that hit the Rostov region, or didn't hit the Rostov region on Friday, because so far Moscow has been claiming that it's been shooting them down. So that is potentially noteworthy. But separately, Max, uh, this morning we're hearing of this uh, missile attack on Kriviri, which is President Zelensky's hometown uh, in central Ukraine. I think we can potentially show you a map of where that is uh, as well. We're hearing so far that two buildings were hit uh, a, an educational institution, uh, and then apparently the, the second missile, this is according to the interior minister, destroyed a section from the fourth to the ninth floors of a residential building. So far they're saying one person killed, uh, ten injured, but they are concerned that people are still trapped under the rubble, so rescue efforts continued there. It yeah. was just six weeks ago that this same town was hit uh, by a missile attack that killed 11 people. Yeah, OK. And in terms of this summit, uh, so, uh, Say, like, being always by Saudi Arabia, isn't mm. it? It's interesting because it's got such a broad group of countries. It's got these developing nations, yeah. Middle Eastern nations, but also a lot of the Western nations, but obviously not Russia. Yeah, so this is Ukraine uh, attempting to rally support around President Zelensky's 10 point peace plan. This is sort of the second phase uh, of that process. This involves national security advisors uh, to the leaders of these countries, and they're really trying to bring in, as you say, not just their Western allies, the traditional allies uh, that provide we weapons and impose sanctions on Russia and things like that. They're trying to bring in the likes of India and Brazil, really the countries that Russia uh, has been trying to court. And certainly we saw with the Africa summit continues to try to court uh, the developing world. So this will happen in Saudi Arabia. The Wall Street Journal says it'll happen this coming uh, weekend. So crucial to watch that. They say that it will be leading up potentially to a leaders summit on this issue uh, at the end of the year. Not involving Moscow, though. OK, Claire, thank you. And joining me now is retired Australian Army Major General Mick Ryan. He is also a former commander at the Australian Defence College. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So we are seeing Ukraine strike Russia again with these drone attacks. So what's it hoping to achieve with these attacks on Russia? And is this a winning strategy for Ukraine? Well, it's part of Ukraine striking back at Russia. I mean, there's a political imperative for President Zelensky to strike back after these terrible Russian strikes at Odessa, at uh, historical, cultural and grain export sites. But also there's an information imperative that Ukraine wants to bring the war home to the Russian people and say, this isn't a special military operation restricted to Ukraine. This is a war which you are part of. So how do you expect Russia will respond militarily to these attacks on its soil? Well, I think we'll see Russia respond again with more drone and missile attacks, but that's pretty much par for the course for the Russians in this war. They'll continue doing that and they'll continue making accusations that this counteroffensive that the Ukrainians are undertaking to take back their territory is preventing peace overtures from Russia. And what impact might these Ukrainian attacks 
on Russia have on some Western nations uh, that are currently sending military assistance to Ukraine? Well, throughout the war, the Ukrainians have gradually expanded their reach in these kind of strikes. We saw them on the Engels Air Force Base. We've seen strikes on Sebastopol and now three attacks on Moscow. At this point in time, I don't perceive that Western countries are nervous about this. These are very targeted strikes. They're not killing Russian civilians. But certainly some may be looking at this as a reason potentially not to give Ukraine attackums. If that's the case, that would be a tragedy. And as we've been talking, uh, of course, uh, we know that Ukraine plans to hold peace talks in Saudi Arabia, but Russia will not be taking part. So what will likely be achieved by this, given President Putin insists that a ceasefire is unlikely while Ukraine's counteroffensive continues? Well, at the G20 meeting last year, President Zelensky outlined his 10-point plan for war termination, and part of that is... Russia leaving Ukrainian territory. He will be seeking to build a wider consensus beyond the G20 for that 10-point plan, and I think that makes a lot of sense at this point in the war. So how do you see this war ending? What, what are the, the options in terms of an off-ramp? Well, there's a broad spectrum of potential outcomes in this war. We certainly all hope that Ukraine will win. I expect that they will. But I think that there is a moral imperative on the West and other countries to help Ukraine win more quickly so more Ukrainians are alive at the end of this to enjoy the fruits of their victory. But uh, so what are those options then? Well, at this point in time, we need to continue supporting the Ukrainians in their current offensive whilst also ensuring we support them over the winter and prepare them and train them for any subsequent offensives that might be needed in 2024. I think even the most optimistic Ukrainian uh, estimates for the counteroffensive will probably see them uh, maybe reach the sea, uh, but Crimea and parts of the Donbass will probably require future operations. All right. Uh, Mick Ryan, thank you so much for sharing your military analysis with us. We do appreciate it. Thank you.